Moin, welcome back to the channel. Welcome in Zurich. I'm Mace, Canadian, best host on the West Coast. All of that. We're looking at some police shooting statistics. We did that video, which was a parody video the other day. That was actually yesterday, uh, of the police in the USA versus the police in Germany, and how they interact with the public and what kind of a uh, an average interaction would be like. That video was obviously very over the top and uh, is a parody type of thing. It's a comedic video, but even in parody and comedic videos, there's still roots of truth. So it was interesting looking at the comments on that video. Uh, I found it really, really interesting what people had to say. So appreciate all of the comments and commentary that was added on that video. Here, we're going to look at just some basic statistics from Germany for police shootings, for fatal police shootings and just shots fired as well. We're going to look at the Canadian statistics and a couple of news articles, and then we'll finish up with the American statistics to get a good contrast of how insane the stats are, especially for the United States of America. So in Germany, Deutschland, for the year of 2022, the official firearm usage, I'll get this, let me uh, zoom in here for you guys. For the year of 2022, the official firearm usage statistics of the Conference of the Ministers of the Interior recorded a total of 54 shots fired at people. 11 individuals were killed as a result. This is three more than the previous year. Legally, these shots were classified as self-defense, slash emergency aid 41 people were injured due to police firearm use so 54 shots fired at people in a whole year is pretty incredibly low right in a country of north of 80 million people that's an incredibly low number of shots i don't know what the crime statistics are specifically i'm sure like most big, big cities, there's probably some crime issues in certain areas. And I know that there's crime everywhere, but I just don't know what the statistics are specifically like in Germany. But the number of shots fired is pretty fantastic. And I think one of you mentioned, but do German police officers actually carry like your normal foot patrol constable officer? Do they carry a firearm or is that only specialized units? Um, so 54 shots fired in a year, 11 individuals were killed, which, you know, is pretty incredible as well. 11 individuals. I mean, it's sad. It's not incredible. Incredible is probably the wrong word, but it's a pretty low number. In mid-May, when CILIP first inquired about the current state of the statistics at the Conference of Ministers of the Interior Ministers, they were told that the data was being processed at that time. It was not possible to provide an expected completion date due to the preparation for the upcoming meeting of the Ministers of the Interior in Berlin. After the meeting's conclusion, the firearm stats were sent at the end of June, accompanied by a note stating that the inquiries before June would be pointless as no information could be provided. The problem with mental health crises. Last year, according to research, three men with mental health issues were shot dead. And in another case, there's at least a suspicion of mental health, health issues. Yeah, this is increasingly a problem and it's been a problem for a long time but one that police agencies especially did not understand or were not trained for they weren't trained to recognize it so there was a lot of instances of people with mental health issues and having a mental health uh, episodes and breakdowns and becoming in a delirious state due to their mental health and where alternative methods should have been used but instead they were shot uh, there's a famous case at the Vancouver International Airport where Robert Kaczynski was having a mental health problem and he was actually killed by the police because they did not know how to deal with, uh, with this man. He had no weapons, anything like that. He was just in an, an excited, delirious state. They call it actually excited delirium uh, or... There's, there's multiple descriptions for this type of behavior, but he should have been 
there there was alternatives that could have been used with him to avoid and, and to save his life and, and get him out of that situation without being shot. I'm not sure. I can't remember if he was shot or they just tased him so many times. And I think he had a heart issue and then passed away. But there was no reliable figures. The article continues on mentally unwell individuals injured in police operations. This isn't new. They've been highlighting it for some time and it has no consequences for police training. So working in police, we do get lots of training on recognizing this type of thing and the alternative methods for protecting the public and as well as other officers and people involved as well as the the person that's having the mental health issue meanwhile there appeared to be an acknowledgement of the issue at the relevant interior ministries okay so we're not going to read all of this about the mental health mental health problems within society uh, other issues the killing of a 16 year old Mohammed Lamine Jarami in the courtyard of a youth welfare center. Yeah, that's that's very sad. 16 years old. Uh, he was sitting alone in the courtyard and threatened to commit suicide by holding a knife to his stomach. To save him from himself, the police decided to spray him in the face with an irritant so that he would rub his eyes with his hands, let go of the knife, and be arrested. However, the irritant did not have the desired effect. The assailant jumped up and moved quickly towards the officers. Two shots with tasers could not stop this movement. The security officer, armed with a submachine gun, fired at the teenager, hitting him with five of the six shots fired. Yeah. Yeah, uh, an alternative intervention should have occurred. And that's very sad. All right, uh, finishing off in 2022, the majority of shots, 15,554 were fired at dangerous, sick, or injured animals. So this is when officers are dispatched to put down uh, an animal that's in a suffering state or becoming a uh, hazard to public safety. Objects were shot 53 times. Uh, objects, okay. There were 94 accidental discharges. Okay, that's not a good number. <laughs> accidental discharges can be very uh, devastating. An ast astonishingly high number of seven shootings by police officers are recorded under suicide attempts. And two as, yeah, unclassified. Okay. All right. Uh, let's look at some of the Canadian stuff. Um, this is looking at statistics here. Use of firearms is the RCMP's most common recorded intervention tactic, report showed. So the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. RCMP officers have pointed guns at individuals more than 5,000 times over the past three years. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police today released a use of breakdown, use of force breakdown that shows the use of firearms is the RCMP's most common recorded intervention tactic. Huh. I thought it would be probably talking them down or tasers. The report was released as calls mount around the world for fundamental policing reform in the wake of mass protests against police brutality. A spokesman for the force said officers respond to roughly 2.8 million calls for service each year. And on average, 2,215 encounters have involved what's known as police intervention. So less than 1% of the total of calls. So 2.8 million calls dispatched. It's a lot. This indicates that approximately 99.9% .9 of RCMP encounters are resolved naturally or successfully de-escalated. So it's a pretty good number, like 99.9% .9 of these calls for service are successfully de-escalated. Pretty good, not too bad. Overall, there was 29% decline in the rate of intervention being applied from 2010 to 2019, with 2019 marking the lowest rate of intervention over a 10-year period. According to RCMP records between 2017 and 2019, Mounties pointed their firearms at people 5,441 times and brandished them 3,062 times as a deterrent. The RCMP's internal subject behavior officer response database released to CBC News says that between 2017 and 2019, officers were involved in 99 officer-involved shootings, an average of 33 per year. 26 of those shootings, an average of 9 per year, resulted in the death of the subject. So... 
the RCMP statistics are essentially comparable to the German statistics. We're going to look at one more article and see how applicable this type of... Uh, okay, so here we have a chart. So 2019... This is just talking about different uh, deployments of intervention use, so we don't really need to look at that. Uh, okay, according to 2018, a 2018 investigation of police shootings, between 2000 and 2017, there was 118 fatal encounters, not even police shootings. So, so a lot of the statistics are a bit hard to hard to evaluate uh, and analyze. Okay, interesting. Yeah, police brutality, it happens. Uh, expert says number of police shootings in Canada spectac spectacularly unrelenting. So these are more recent t statistics. Alberta, Western province in Canada saw 21 police shootings in 2023. And that's just one of our provinces. When it says police shootings, does that mean that they actually shot people? I assume that means they actually shot people. Marking a 90% increase from 2020 when, when there was just 11. It probably has something to do with the pandemic and uh, the economy and mental health issues springing from the pandemic and the, and the uh, poverty as a result. All right. Upward trend. A tally compiled by the Canadian press found police shot at 85 people in Canada. And 41 people were shot fatally. So definitely not as good as the German numbers. But still, shooting at just 85 people is not too bad. The number that they shot fatally is is not great. Um, and when he says it's spectacularly unrelenting, yeah, you know, he's, he's probably right, but... In 2022, 94 people were shot at, 50 fatally. So 40 to 50 people per year in Canada. Uh, and the numbers are increasing. Uh, as in four years ago, there were 61 shootings, 38 of which were fatal. So it seems like the police are definitely using their weapons more in Canada and fatally more often as well. All right, we're going to look at the uh, United States of America. All right. Nobody gets shot there. People shot to death by the U.S. police, 2017 to 2024 by race. Okay, so in 2023, there's 425. It's kind of strange that they break it all down by each race. 425 white people, 229 black people, 133 Hispanic people, 29 other, 347 unknown. Okay. And so far in 2024... Already 55 white people, 32 black people, 21 Hispanic. That's a lot of people. That's sad. Sadly, the trend of fatal police shootings in the United States, States seems to be only increasing. With a total of 178 civilians being shot as of March 5th, 2004. So just so far, we're only, you know, uh, January, February, March, April, May. Like we're six, five, six months in these stats were from a couple months ago and there was already 178 in the united states in 2023 oh. so <laughs> when contrasted with the stats from germany and canada that is spectacularly unrelenting 1000 163 fatal police shootings in 2023 in the United States. That's crazy. All right, kind of a weird video today.
but it's fine. You know, I can do whatever I want. It's my channel. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video. And uh, yeah, it's interesting stuff. All right. Tschüss. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. We'll see you soon.